Welcome to Local Everywhere. My guest today is Paul Grundle and Janet Topal. Am I pronouncing your name right, Janet? Yeah. And uh, they're here to talk about the Writers Institute book festival that, that's taking place shortly. So, Paul, the, how many years have you been doing this? This is our fifth annual Albany oh, Book good. Festival, and uh, I'm just surpassed my fifth year. It was something we started uh, when I came on board, and it's grown into a, a wonderful community event. Janet's been here at the Writers Institute for uh, several years longer than I have, and, and uh, she can tell you more about it. You know, this is our poster. Uh, Janet is our, our graphic artist, so everything nice. that you see on our website and on flyers and in printed programs janet creates um mm -hmm. we've got an amazing lineup uh that we can tell you about um or you can ask questions the, the main point is that it's saturday september 17th mm -hmm. from 10 30 a.m to 5 p.m here on the uptown campus which is 1400 washington avenue mm -hmm. and it's in our campus center our new campus center uh, actually called the Great Dane Union now, um, but we can we can talk more about it or whatever you want to talk about. So, Janet, I got a question for you. You work at the Writers Institute, but you also uh, work at the co-op. What do you do at the co-op? I work in the marketing department at the co-op. Okay. I do food sampling as well as um, the flyers, the flyers that you see every week. Okay. Together. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of fun doing that. Mm -hmm. and, I bet between both jobs, you have a very interesting life. <laughs> I, I work with the two favorite thing, food and writers. I, I'm a big oh, reader. So yes. This is a dream come true, meeting these authors, listening to speak, hearing them talk about their books in their own words is inspiring. And then I go and work in a, a great store that has amazing food. Mm -hmm. And I, I look at food, pictures of food all day long. <laughs> I guess we could call it food for the soul and food for the stomach. I mean, uh, anyway, um, Janet is also one of our great readers. She and, and her husband, Alan, come to many of our events. Uh, she, she reads the books. She's got great questions always. And she's a moderator at the book festival. Yes, you I can will. start with you and tell us about the, the session you're moderating. Oh, yeah. His name is um, Gary Josephson. He, he wrote a self-help book. Um, he has seven principles of more successful uh, living. So I, 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 I anticipating a very positive and uplifting interview. The nice thing is he's a, a University at Albany alumnus, mm -hmm. and we have several uh, alumni and uh, emeriti and faculty involved in the book festival. So it's really, you know, a celebration of, of writing of this whole region, all the writers who are in this region, but also the University at Albany's great tradition of supporting writers. And, and of course, our founder, William Kennedy, will be there. Mm -hmm. So who, besides you and William and Janet, who else do you anticipate coming to the uh, festival this I year? I mean, do we need any more, Cynthia? That's uh, <laughs> no, just kidding. No, we have, we really are, are proud that we showcase our local and regional writers who get a big crowd to come and, and talk about their books and buy their books. We have 80 or 90 local authors who are getting a table uh, display at no cost. You know, we, we provide this at no cost. And the whole event is free and open to anyone, which is different from many book festivals. We, we get sponsors. We have wonderful sponsors. But some of the highlights will be there's a tribute to, to Hunter S. Thompson uh, after 50 years of him. He's, he's passed away, of course, but publishing books starting 50 years ago. So we have Gary Trudeau. Uh, the great Doonesbury creator who created the iconic Uncle Duke based mm -hmm. on Hunter Thompson. We have Douglas Brinkley, an award-winning historian. He's the CNN presidential historian, written many books, and he was uh, Hunter Thompson's executor. And then William Kennedy, who knew Hunter Thompson since the late 1950s in Puerto Rico, when he turned down Hunter for a job at his newspaper. So yeah. that's that's kind of a highlight, you know, sharing stories on Hunter, but we've also got people like Francine Prose. We've got um, uh, former U.S. Poet Laureate Robert Pinsky. 
We've got H. Carl McCall, our former state controller and chairman of the State University of New York, wrote a memoir that I worked on with him and will be in conversation. But there's, you know, as you can see from the program, uh, there, there's pages and pages. There's there's dozens of opportunities to uh, hear sessions and interact with writers. Um, so, yeah. Do you want to know any other specific sessions or, or what do you want to talk about, Cynthia? Let, let's just talk about the sessions and who will be um, conducting them. Okay. Janet, do you want to jump in with a couple yeah. that you're interested in? We have uh, panels on Raising Amazing Kids. We have End of Times Fiction coming up. Uh, panels on immigration, on food, uh, the history of ballet, becoming an American poet. Um, New York history, which I'm is going to be a favorite of mine because we have uh, some terrific authors on that. Right. We have uh, um, Peter Quinn, who's yes. uh, written a memoir about growing up in the Bronx, but he also spent many years in the, the State House. He was a speechwriter for Mario Cuomo. David Petrugia, who's a UAlbany alumnus, a highly regarded historian, writes about national politics, state politics. He'll be there. And Casey Seiler, the editor of the Times Union, will be moderating that panel. So that's a really interesting one. The food panel, we've got some tremendous writers. And Steve Barnes, the, the food writer and, and food critic, the Times Union, will be moderating that session. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's many, many authors. Uh, we just kind of touched on the highlights. Um, so yeah. each, I'm sorry, Janet. Yeah. We have another author, um, Ben McGrath on Riverman. It's kind of a cool story about uh, a, a, a very unique individual that traveled the rivers of the U.S. He also happens to be, this is the interesting story, Ben McGrath is a well-known New Yorker writer, and this gentleman named Dick Conant uh, happened to canoe past his house on the Hudson River outside of New York City. He said, wow, it's a really unique guy. He's a a, he was a giant, you know, he described him as like a Santa Claus in bib overalls and a sunburn. And he was a University of Albany alumnus in the early 1970s. He was an art student, brilliant, played soccer, but he developed mental health uh, illness and, and, and issues. And he really found comfort and solace canoeing for months and years at a time. And Ben McGrath met him uh, canoeing from Canada from the New York border all the way to Florida and the book begins as a mystery because his canal uh, his his canoe washes up in a, a in a sort of a out of the way backwater in the Carolinas but there's no Dick Conant yeah. and Ben McGrath writes this beautiful book about kind of a tortured whole soul but a, a genius he, while he was canoeing for years he wrote several beautiful books that survived and he also painted some magnificent paintings. And it's kind of that line between, you know, genius and madness, sometimes a fine line. It's, it's a beautiful story of a journey and also like reclaiming this person who was right on our campus, who was beloved by his students, loved to party. And, you know, he had some mental health issues, but it's a, it's a wonderful book. So over the years has the people that come increased absolutely yeah i mean we don't really have a counter at the door but we know we've grown from you know a, a couple thousand to we think we hit four thousand one year and, and last year was some covid hesitancy we think that's passed this year so we hope for another big year we hope for several thousand people Yes. So I'm sorry, uh, Janet. What you do is unique. Are there any other colleges that do this? Not that I know of. No, not, um, not that we're aware of. I mean, we, we are really unique in, in the way we were formed. William Kennedy founded us with some seed money from his MacArthur Genius Grant, which they call them. And uh, our president at the time, Vincent O'Leary, you know, in 1983, we started. He, he agreed to match some money and we've grown every year. We're going to celebrate 40 years next year. And there's no other institute like ours uh, on a college campus. We also have a, a legislative mandate to, um, to select through a long review process, the New York State poet and the New York State author every two years. 
mandated in law from Mario Cuomo when, when we were founded. He was a fan of Bill Kennedy's writing and they were friends. Um, so this year, the current state author, state poet is Ayed Akhtar as the state author. State poet is Willie Perdomo. And next year's book festival will be inaugurating, inducting a, a new set of uh, state authors, state poets. Um, so that's every two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're definitely unique in the country yeah. for what we do yeah. for on a college campus. And being free and open to the public. Right. All of our events, mm -hmm. yeah. without charge. And it's so, so inspiring. So have you been in contact with other colleges and do they like what you do? I'm sure they do, right? They do like what we do. We've partnered with with some other uh, colleges, certainly in the area. Where we've got something coming up uh, next month with the College of St. Rose. We've done things at Sage College of Troy. We've done things uh, downstate with SUNY Central. We're part of the 64 campus SUNY network, and uh, we're Good. looking to do more. We've done things at SUNY Plattsburgh in the past. So we, we definitely like to collaborate. We work with a lot of local libraries, organizations, I mean, you know, the co-op is a hub. I know you're you're a, you're a regular there, Cynthia, and mm -hmm. it's a hub for community activities. And I think we fit really well with the yes. co-op. Janet always puts our flyers up. I mean, her flyers. <laughs> she creates a. This oh, yeah. is at the co-op right now. <laughs> she created our our fall program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. nice. And I put posters up on the community boards all the time to keep them updated. Mm -hmm. so. so, whose idea was? was it to create the writers institute was it william kennedy's yes it was william kennedy's because he was always part of the english department here um you know he was an adjunct faculty member which i've been and and many of us you know you start you don't have a full-time contract and uh he always wanted to bring in <clears throat> great writers he didn't have the funding he didn't have the capacity and it was something always in his mind so when he when fame hit and he had a little bit of money, he created this and it, it endures. And, you know, we are regarded as one of the preeminent in the country. You know, when you look at the the, the quality and number of writers and workshops and events, <clears throat> sorry, symposium we've done, it's it's really unparalleled. And our, our president and our entire university is very proud. What do they call us, Janet? They call us... The, the jewel in the crown, don't they? Yes. I mean, I, I've heard that, so I'm not just, I'm not making that up. Janice's going to verify. She's fact checking me right here. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what you do is terrific. Do people who know about what you do ask to, to become involved, or you, or do you reach out to the different authors? Different it's it's a little bit of both yeah. okay people hear of us you know we try to be friendly show them a nice experience because we're we're all writers in different genres and different aspects and we respect the craft we know how hard it is to write and finish and publish a book so so they come and they have a great experience and they tell their friends hey those people in albany are really nice and friendly and for our first you know 25 years it was really bill kennedy's incredible warmth friendliness he's just a great time people wanted to come and be with bill and yeah. they, they still do he's 94 still the heart and soul of everything we do we've had many re repeat um authors doris kearns goodwin has come back yes. numerous times yep douglas brinkley has come back a number of times mm -hmm. um gary mcguire who um wrote gregory Greg gregory I'm sorry. yep that's okay. Gregory <laughs> McGuire. We got Gary Josephson on yeah. your mind. <laughs> who's an alumni who wrote Wicked has come back a couple of times. Yes, and he's coming uh, next month in October. Uh, he's got a new book out. Very prolific author. So basically all of the people that participate, you know, in, in the weekend's events, they're all New York State authors. Am I correct? Primarily, we've got there's actually this <clears throat> really interesting award that, that created uh, for the book festival and for us, Bruce Piasecki, who's a business consultant, uh, lives in, in uh, Boston Spa, is also a, a author of many books. He and his wife um, created a writing prize. It really is meant to reflect um, societal needs like uh, interest in climate change and combating climate change. So the author uh, this year is coming from 
my hometown, actually, Seattle, Washington, um, Dr. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer uh, Hernandez, and um, her book is called Fresh uh, Green Banana Leaves. Yes. Fresh Banana Leaves, and she's a, a, a indigenous, she writes about the issues of indigenous people in the Pacific Northwest and, and the larger issue of social justice, food justice, um, and uh, so that's also, you know, she'll get this award at the book festival. She'll be leading a panel discussion on her work and her book. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a, another aspect. So, you know, there's aspiring writers all over the country. And I'd like to see through, through what I'm doing right now and to put it up on Instagram and my YouTube channel to have other colleges throughout the country embrace the writers in their uh in their um locality to do what you're doing i think that would be great yeah i think i think you're onto something i think we have served as a model um many people have contacted us and asked for our you know suggestions and our history and expertise and and it is an idea that you know, we don't have a patent on. We would love to share our ideas and have it spread all across the country. Um, we're, we're really proud of what we do. Speaking of inspiring authors, something I didn't even mention, this is another thing that we present free in the week leading up to the book festival. And I should be giving you our website throughout nyswritersinstitute.org. We are doing a series of free online writing workshops Ooh, for aspiring nice. authors, which also opens it up to people anywhere in the world, people with mobility issues, people who might not be able to get, you know, to campus. So this is, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, next week. Uh, you can look on our website, nyswritersinstitute.org and sign up for one of those. It could be about how to get published. It could be yes. legal issues. Um, it could be how to write a good, uh, you know, character in a novel. There's a, there's a wide variety of topics and four really talented writers are leading those. And, and you know, we, we are paying them. We're proud to support and pay our writers when they work for us and, and, and come to the book festival and things. So I see you have a bunch of books right in back, you. Absolutely. You should see our office. I think you've been here. It's like, yes. No, I've never been collection. there. Oh, you got to come. We might send you out with a couple of books because, you know, we are book people. And it's that saying, so many books, so little time. I've got books I need to write. I've got stacks I need to read. We love reading them. We love talking about them. We love having the authors. And it's that interaction that I, I think Zoom has its place, as you found with your YouTube channel, as we found during COVID. You know, we, we did all these recorded things, but we bring, I mean, it's in our, it's in our motto. Janet puts it on all our posters. What's our motto? Oh my gosh. Come right. on, I'm sorry. <laughs> Where readers and writers meet, join the conversation. Oh, so, that's nice. <laughs> she, she, she only produced those words on, on a million posters. I know. But anyway. But that's the thing when you get people together it's about they, the they love coming up to the writer and like oh there's one more question i wanted to ask oh can you sign my book i have a whole collection of signed books which i do i mean it's, it's becoming overwhelming i have so many signed books but uh but it's that interaction and the authors love it because to write a book is years often sitting in a solitary place with right. the laptop some still write by hand and and then when they put this out into the world, they want to hear people react to it and ask them questions about it and, and laugh about it or cry about it. Or, you know, so these books, they have a life of their own and you put it out in the world. It's like the, the pebble in the pond. You really, you know, we get people who come that are so moved by someone's book and they're just so excited to meet them and, and spend time with them. Yeah. As Bill Kennedy says, literary conversation is the best conversation. <laughs> we, we wholeheartedly support that. It's great conversation because these people are great talkers, you know, a anyone who can sustain your interest for 500 pages mm -hmm. is a great talker, you know. So is Bill Kennedy, how's his health? His health is great. You know, 94, he still likes to work every day he writes every day you know when you're a writer writers write you know um and uh that's what he's doing and i'm really looking forward i've heard some of the stories of hunter thompson who was a as you know the gonzo journalist and wild but you know we have 
we've had over 2000 writers here. And if you go to our, our YouTube channel, there's hundreds of hours of excerpts of recorded conversations and authors reading the very most popular every year since he came here over 20 years ago is Hunter Thompson. Wow. Which is amazing. He is a perennial superstar and he keeps finding new audiences, you know, generations later and, and I don't know, a dozen years after he died. It, it's amazing. So that's why we also wanted to, to um, you know, Book Festival, we try to present things that will have wide audience appeal. I should have mentioned we have we have a whole children's literature section going in a room. We have the, the children's author, Sylvie Cantler, Cantervitz, and we have uh, Scribbler's Magazine, which encourages young people to write essays and poems and fictions. So yeah, we have a whole section on children's literature too. It sounds like you really look forward to this, Paul. I do because Janet, well, Jennifer Kowalski should be in here. Our, our, uh, our, you know, MVP of our team who does all the logistics, which is not easy. Her parents come in and help out. We get volunteers to help. It is a lot of work, but it's 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 really neat that we've created something that grows, is now an annual tradition. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted a big community event in the fall, which is our book festival. And then our film festival is the spring. It's, it'll be our, our fourth year coming up. And each of those grow over time. You know, this is how these festivals um you know mature and expand and develop year after year um so we're proud that we've created these two annual traditions and uh yeah the book festival is, is just a lot of fun you see people all excited we didn't even mention the tote bag i think we have one right there should we hold that up um this is another one of janice's creation so if you really need one more inducement you can, oh wow don't, don't put that in front of you janice. Oh, sorry <laughs> I put it in front of me so that if you come uh -huh. and hopefully you will fill it up with books you buy from local authors from mm -hmm. the featured authors but this is another thing we do um and again our sponsors um you know we have many sponsors uh, i'll be reading them you'll find them on our website uh albanybookfestival.com and uh yeah tope is yours if you if you're among the first thousand to show up so uh, give us the details of exactly when, what time, and so forth. Go ahead, Janet. Over here. All right. Hold on a second. Okay. Um, so 1030, we're starting out with apocalyptic fiction, a bunch of books at the end of the world. So starting off on a bright note. Um, and then we have Gary Josephson. And then we have conversation with Robert Pinsky and Robert Boyers. So one of the few, if only complaints is there's so many people that they can't decide where the, what they want to do and see first. There's consecutive events so like and programs moving. happening at one time. Yeah. yeah. And then like around 1130 is um, Carl McCall. Um, Lynn Garofala. Yeah, Garofala. On, um, talking about uh, Lena Jinska, this uh, famous choreographer. So that's going to attract dance fans. You yes. Know? And, and then we have a food panel. Yes. And then um, around 1245, we have a parenting panel. Um, Jessica Hernandez yes. is a Piasecki Award winner and our New York history panel. Then going into the afternoon, we have an immigration panel, uh, Ben McGrath on Riverman, conversation with Susan Choi. Yes, Susan Choi. I should have mentioned her. She's a she's a very popular, she will draw, again, each of these authors will draw different types of readers and different audiences. And then we have a, um, let's see, conversation with Leslie Fenwick and Tom Spofford. Tim Spofford, yep. Tim Spofford. Yep. Um, a conversation with Francine Prose and Robert Boyers. And at the end, like late afternoon, we have the tribute to Hunter Thompson and a Constitution Day event. Which yes, sure. students are going to be reading essays about Constitution Day, which is something that the university has always uh, been part of, you know, encouraging students to vote, encouraging students to register and 
encouraging students to know their constitutional rights. So we have st student essays <clears throat> that will be read then. And then we have UAB faculty and emeritus faculty events. Yep, yep. And then, in, and then we have our children's event, which would be um, Scribblers and Sylvie Kantorovitz. Kantorovitz, yep. Yep, and then we have um, the UAlbany Young Writers Project open up open mic reading. And our uh, we have a poetry workshop that we've supported um, and several local poets will be reading their poetry during the book festival as well. And then all the whole time in our campus center, which is one of our largest spaces, there'll be 80 to 90 local authors yes. with Exhibitors. tables and, and publishers and booksellers offering really interesting books. And you can have great conversations um, with the authors there. That's in the so, campus center ballroom. Right. So what day will this be? What's Saturday, the September 17th. Uh-huh. And the hours are from? 10.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. And do you do anything like the day before or the night before? Yeah, like I said, the four nights leading up to it, uh, free online writers' workshops okay. with really uh, talented, accomplished authors. You know, if you go to albanybookfestival.com or also our main website, nyswritersinstitute.org, you'll find all the information. There's free parking. It's in our Dutch Quad uh, area, which is near Fuller Road, near the tennis courts. That's all laid out on the book festival website. And uh, yeah, come, come early and get your tote bag for sure. Janet, are you a writer? No. <laughs> she's a she's a graphic person. She oh, does okay. all the beautiful designs and pictures. It takes me a while to write an email. So <laughs> okay. I appreciate the art of writing. I wish I could put my thoughts down. But even if you haven't read the books or you're not familiar with the author, it's still rewarding to listen to them and be inspired by them. Mm -hmm. She's a voracious reader, too, which yeah. impresses me. Um, she she reads as much as any of us or yes. more. I love the smell of new books. Yes. When we get those books in, I <laughs> I can't resist. I gotta it, pick them up. And we compliment each other. You know, she's a visual thinker. You wouldn't want me designing anything or drawing anything. I'm a word person. So we all have our talents in our team here. Yeah. So uh, we'll see you all at the uh, book festival um, on Saturday. What's the date again? September 17th. Okay. We hope, we hope there's good weather, but it's all indoors and rain or right. shine. You'll be dry and comfortable. And uh, yeah, everyone is welcome. Yeah. Everyone. So you've been listening to Paul Grundle and Janet Topal. This is Local Everywhere. And if you like this show, please subscribe to my YouTube pay, uh, channel. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Janet. That was wonderful. Thanks, Cynthia. We hope to see everyone at the book festival. Thank you. Thank you.